Welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm Sandy Atkinson, your hostess, and the basket we'll be working on today is called our Friendship Basket. This is the very first basket I ever made. It's easy to make, and I think it's one that you'll enjoy and perhaps enjoy giving away to your neighbors and friends. To make this basket, the material in your cut pattern are as follows. You're going to need 5 eighths of an inch flat that is cut 8 pieces, 24 inches long, quarter inch flat, 5 eighths inch flat oval, number 12 round, and from this you're going to need one piece that's cut 24 inches long. That's going to be our handle piece. I already have mine cut and I have them soaking. We're going to come in here and get them. On this basket, we want to mark our centers on the right side of the reed. So do like just like we've always done. Line up your bottom ends, draw your finger, put your mark up here. When you have your center mark on all your pieces, come back on one piece, line up your tape measure, take your pencil, put your tape measure at number three, mark off three inches here, and mark over here at six. Make them heavy so you can see the lines. Take your next piece, it already has its center mark, line up your center marks, then you can kind of cheat and save yourself some time by just copying these lines on here. We need these marks on all eight pieces. As you're working the pieces, kind of feel one that maybe is a little heavier than the rest and kind of set that one aside. You have one piece that's going to be cut different, just one. We're going to come in here and kind of eyeball halfway between one end of our center marks. Then I'm, you're going to start trimming this down and trim it and then taper back up to this mark here. Come over to this side. We're going to do the same thing in reverse. Start at this mark. What we need is about a quarter of an inch left here in the middle where the center mark is. This one we're going to short it out and have our fanning out here. Now the other pieces are going to be cut like this. Starting here at our outside mark, taper it down until you come to the center. Continue cutting and taper it back out when you come to that top mark. Same thing in reverse. About a quarter of an inch left in the middle. Taper it back out to this mark here. The rest of the seven pieces will be cut like this. Remember, just one is going to be cut different. On the piece that's cut different, I want you to come up here to the top and put an S, S, and that stands for our starting spoke. Now we're going to lay out our basket. The starting spoke is going to be laid out first. Our center mark is here. We're going to take our next piece and cross it over. Remember, now this is our first piece. This is the one we cut different. Take another piece, line up your center marks. These are on the right side, remember. We're going to cross them over like this. You should have four pieces left. Continue dividing. One more piece. Now, if that'll stay right there, I'm going to come over here and get a weaver. I've got my quarter inch flat soaking. I'm going to choose another one. This one feels heavy. Pick out a piece that feels a little thinner. Okay, because we've got to make a sharp turn with this. On here, I want you to take it and I want you to cut me a tail and make it about six to eight inches long. I'm going to come up here and we're going to just keep tapering right down. Taper it down. So by the time I get down here to the end, there's not much left. You can disregard that piece. Find the right side. We want the right side of the reed to be up. Taking this tail and holding my finger in the middle, I'm going to slip it underneath my starting spoke. Now I can't turn this at this point, but I'm going to weave it. I can't turn this yet. I'm going to take my weaver and I'm going to weave it around. And this is important that I get a nice round circle here with this beginning weaving. 
And keep in mind you're taking a, a flat piece of reed and you're forcing it to go round. So you're going to have little kinks in it. You're going to have to play with it. Keep working it around. I know you've got a lot of material here to kind of fight with, but pull it through. Following the over-under pattern. Now, if I was to keep weaving at this point, I would be weaving the same pattern I just wove here, and it would not hold the basket together. So what I have to do is come up here and give myself an odd number of spokes. And I'm going to start up here at the very top of my split spoke, and I'm going to cut it down the middle. I'm going to have to do this upside down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to split this spoke right down the middle. Move it back up here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, just to where I cut that different. Remember how we cut that one different? That's where we're going to stop. Now I'll center this back up so you can see it. Go back and check and make sure I have a nice round circle here. Now I'm going to treat this split spoke as two spokes. And I'm going to continue weaving. Now that I've done a couple more over and under weaves, I am able to turn this as I weave so that I can keep right on going and I can keep my work right at the top. You may have to come back here. I've got a gap here, so I'm going to come and work this gap out. Pull this over here. Keep on weaving. Now I can spin it as I weave. I'm going to continue weaving in this pattern until I reach my marks. And it's going to be six inches across from here to here. Continue spinning this. When I first made this basket, I, I took some material and I gave it away, or I used it as a Christmas present, and I made a center insert out of red polka dot material, and I made six matching napkins and put in it, and it was really a pretty little gift to give away. This is a fun basket to do, and it's a fairly quick basket. So if you need a gift in an afternoon, you can quickly make this one up. Kind of go back and check. Make sure you have a nice round circle. If you don't start it with a nice round circle, you can end up with a lopsided basket. This is the same pattern that we use for a, a harvest basket. Only we enlarged the pattern, making our spokes much longer. But it's all this basic work. Keep on weaving this out till we come to our marks. One thing that you can do that we can talk about while I'm working on this here is cleaning your baskets. Your baskets are going to need a yearly cleaning. Simply put them in the shower, give them a good showering down, do it in the summertime so then you can hang them out in the sunshine to dry. And to air out and that will freshen your baskets. If you do it once a year that's, that should be sufficient. Almost to these outside marks. Continuing just that over under pattern. If you make a mistake when you're working on this, it's very easy to catch. I have one that's out of line, just draw it back. I'm almost ready to run out of my weaver. And we just go back to that original pattern of overlapping four, hiding our ends to add our new piece. Make sure when you add a new piece each time, you check and have the right side of the weaver out. Almost ran out here. I want to make sure I end on top, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to trim this one so I'm ending on the top of a spoke. Get a new weaver, 
check for the right side. Watch for the little splinters to come up. That'll tell me which side is right or wrong. Go back four. This is one, two, three, four. Hide it under the fourth one. Weave it right on top. Continue weaving and this comes across here and hides my old end there. One more time around and I'm to my marks. Then we're going to pick up the basket and we're going to hold it against our tummy and that's going to help shape the sides of the basket. Let me do one more so that this is my end, my old end that I'm hiding and that'll hold that in there now. Now I'm going to pick it up and we're going to work with it against my belly here. And with this hand, I'm going to work the, this front of the basket down. And the back part is leaning against my belly. And we're going to weave it like this. You're going to get probably some gap in here. I missed a weaver there. Go back and pick it up. Probably going to get some gap in here. Don't worry about it right now. We can go back and we can tighten this basket. We cannot go back and loosen, but we can go back and tighten. Be careful you don't pull too tight on these weavers, otherwise you're going to end up with a skinny little basket. On the opposite side, don't pull too, don't let it get too loose, or you're going to end up with a very sloppy basket. I'm going to weave this around. Let me show you the shape of it. Can you see how the sides are starting to come up? Okay. We'll do a few more rows, working with it against your tummy. Over and under pattern. This basket that I've made over here is one that I have stained. And remember again, I'll tell you a little bit about the wood stains. You can choose any wood stain as long as it does not say seal. If it says seal, it will make your basket very brittle. These baskets will outlive us. And our children will probably make money on them if they were to ever sell them, but hopefully they'll keep them for a nice family heirloom. There we go. Now I'm at the point where I'm almost ready. I can set it back on the table and work on it. Or if this is comfortable, you could just go ahead and finish weaving it up like this. I'm going to have to add another weaver in just a minute. If your baskets need reshaping, you can simply wet them down and reshape them. Okay, I don't have enough to continue weaving, so I'm going to come up here on the table. I'm going to clip this off, always on the outside, and I need a new weaver. It's really important, I think, for time-wise to take the time when you begin weaving and coil each one up individually. Then you don't have to fight inside that wet bucket for a new weaver. And we're going to keep right on going. If you're more comfortable weaving against your tummy, just continue to do so. You're going to weave this up. And the next part I have already done, so we won't have to. Can you see how that's going up the sides now? And I'm getting a nice shape to my sides. It's not setting yet, but we'll go, we'll go over how to make it set. We're going to continue weaving. OK. We're going to our next basket that I already have woven, dripping wet. And this one's not going to set yet either. We're going to continue to weave this out, finishing up here at the top. I don't have enough to go around again, so I'm going to stop it here. We're going to end it on our split spokes, because that's where we started it. Backtrack a little bit here. Cut yourself a tapered end. Make a tapered end. Finish weaving out this piece over and under. Now, because we have an odd number of spokes, we're going to have two that are going to be the same. Remember how we're going to put a point if it's on the outside of a weaver. We're going to put a point. If it's on the inside, we're going to cut it off. A point on outside, cut it off if it's on the inside. 
you, because you have an odd number, you're going to have two together. And I believe I'll make these right here, to my two that are going to, both of these are going to tuck in here. To turn your bottom, because because this isn't going to set, and my students always love that expression, we're going to turn their bottoms now. Put the basket upside down. Take your thumbs and give it a push in. Kind of play with it a little bit so you get a nice round bottom here. Turn it up and there it'll set for you. If you need to go back, if you have some that are gapping in here, take your flathead screwdriver and just give them a pull and work this gap out until you come to a place where it has overlapped. And then you can work out the excess there. The next step, of course, oh, we need to pack these down. Pack in your weavers. Work them down so that they're nice and tight together. You don't want any gaps inside your basket in between your weavers here. And then the next step, you already, we've been over several times, is to tuck in all these spokes that are on the top. I've already done that on this one to save time. And now we're at the point where we're going to put our rim on. We've been through that again too, so I'm going to do that quickly for you. I have my 5 8 flat oval soaking. This needs to soak at least 10 minutes because it's a heavier reed. And you're going to come in here for 2 inches and you're going to trim off and flatten out that roundness on the oval side. You're going to need lots of clothespins. Starting with your split spoke, you're going to wrap this around, clipping it every few inches. I'm going to overlap, cut this off where we started our whittling. Now we have to start on the other side. First of all, we have to trim off our two inches here. Start on the opposite side from our overlap and work this around. Use the same clothespins. Cut it off just where you started your whittling, which is two inches back. Now we're going to make our handle. The handle, that number 12 round reed, I've had soaking for a good 45 minutes to an hour. It's really thick and to make it pliable, you need to soak it that long. This, foot, this piece is two feet long, 24 inches. You're going to need a cutting board. Mop up my water here. You're going to need a cutting board. I just have an old piece of pine that I've used. And you're going to need a pencil and a sharp knife. We're going to come in here. Here are our overlaps. I want to stay away from those. So I'm going to go opposite ends of my overlap. Put my handle in. A rule of thumb is the handle should be two-thirds the size of the basket. Of course, we only treat our rules lightly here because anything goes in basket weaving. But as a rule of thumb, kind of check it out. That looks about a little high maybe. Let's push it down a little bit. Okay. Come in with your pencil and mark with a pencil mark the top where your rim is and the bottom where the rim is. My rim falls between these two marks, this 5 eighths flat. Same thing on the other side. Mark the top and the bottom. Pull out your handle. Take your sharp knife and be careful. This is kind of, well, it's not really dangerous, but just be careful you don't cut yourself. Come in here and we're going to carve down Where, our, where we made our pencil mark, carved down on the other side, and this little piece should flip out. Go in and carve it again. Carve, keep carving down. You want it to be about, gouge it in about half the size of the handle, about halfway into the handle. Kind of check it here, maybe just a little bit deeper. Okay. Can you see that notch I made in there? If I put it against the blue, you see the notch there? Okay, here we go. 
See the notch I made? It's about halfway into the handle. Now we're going to come up here about a quarter of an inch from where we made our notch and we're going to taper this down. Then we're going to turn it over and we're going to do the same thing, kind of eyeball it where you started the tapering down on the other side and taper down this side also. And your pieces are going to fly all over the room. I give my students 10 points if they hit their neighbor with their pieces. Okay, when you finish your taper, it's going to look like this. If I can get a close-up of this, can you see this? Here's your taper, here's my notch, there's my taper. Can you see that? That's what your handle, you're going to have to do two of them. I'm only going to do one. I've already got one done. I'm going to do two of them like this. Get my cutting board out of the way. I'm going to have to take off these two. Now we're going to slip this down into our rim. Go back, go down into your rim here. Run it alongside of a spoke. Come in here and pick up your weavers. I'm picking up my weavers in here. Sliding this handle down, I want it to catch on the rim. Just work it down in here. Give it a good shove. And we want that to catch, there we go, just a little farther. Catch on the rim. Come around in the opposite now. Because we have an odd number of spokes, we kind of have to find the rim that's, or the spoke opposite of it that's going to equal it out halfway. Same thing. We're going to slide this right down our spoke, picking up our weavers on the inside. Come down here and pick up a few more weavers until that catches right in there on that rim. Then we're going to start lashing. We're going to need our quarter inch flat. So many buckets here, I have to find out which one I put it in. Make yourself a point so it will travel easier. Find the right side. The right side faces the basket. Let's start at a spot near the handle. I'm going to come up here between the rim and the basket, six inches, pull it up about six inches, bend it and put it down. So it's circling around the inside of the basket. Come under at least two rows of weaving. Came undone. Okay, two rows of weaving. Open up your weavers, insert it back in. You should be able to getting this pretty soon, this lashing step here of locking it in. We've been over it several times now. If I'm going to double lash this, I'm going to just exit once by the handle. If I'm going to single lash it, then I'm going to do it twice because in double lashing, I'll catch it when I come back around again. I'm going to have to come in here and open up my weavers. Stick it in. Pull this one around. This one I'm going to single lash, so I'm going to go over this crossing again with you. Pull it tight. Give it a good, tight tug. Cross it over the handle. I'm going to cross right across here over the handle. Straighten this out so we don't get kinks in it again. Put it in here. Pull all this length. To single lash means I'm going to cross my handle now, come back here, and go back into the same hole that I did before. If I was going to double lash, I would keep right on going. When I got back to where I started, I would just double back around, cross over the area I've already done, going the opposite way. When I meet it again, I would just end it the way we always have. Cross over here. Remember to cross on the top of each one of your spokes. Okay, and just continue this out, doing the handle the other handle the very same way and ending it the very same way that we started it. 
the baskets that we're going to be working on next program is our cat head basket, kind of an interesting basket. I'll explain how it got its name in our next taping. But this will be the basket we'll work on next. I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you for being with us again.